Yep, and well, we're going to have to move on to Edith. Edith, go ahead, please. Hi, my name's Edith, and I'm just calling because I'm kind of in poverty. Like, I know a lot of the callers are working, and they have excellent situations. I'm actually on Ontario Works. Okay. But I've, I've had a very um, impoverished, very difficult situation, and I, I hope that Andrew uh, Fieldstein can give me some advice. Uh, I just wanted to know, for somebody who's on welfare, um, how much it would cost me to actually file for a divorce, and also, like, if, if it's contested, like, say the person wants to reconcile, but you're really at the point where you're just sort of not wanting to reconcile, like... Uh, how would you go about that? And if there's assets, like between you and the per party, uh, with somebody in my circumstance, would it go 50-50? So I'll just pass it over to Andrew. Thank you. Well, number one, if one person wants to divorce, all you have to be doing is living separate and apart for a year. There are other issues that flow from that, but living separate and apart for a year is sufficient grounds to grant a divorce. So if one person wants to reconcile and the other one doesn't, that doesn't matter. That may impact the fact that they may be angry and they may want to prolong the process, but it's not a legal ground to stop the divorce from taking place. Now, I'm not sure if I heard 50-50. Are there children involved here? Uh, currently at this point, um, I, I actually, we do have a child, but we both kind of are in agreement that the child is in good care at this point. With and a family member, more the issue at, pardon me? No, go ahead. More the issue at this point is I just wanted to know is, uh, like, we had two, uh, we had some assets, and I was just wondering, because we were legally married and we went through some up and down uh, separation, does that mean that he's entitled to every property that I've had in the duration of the marriage? No. And it's a very good question because... When we deal with what we call equalization of net family property, that's the division of the assets that people call 50-50, it's really looking at two points in time. You look at the date of separation, and this, what I'm going to give is subject to certain uh, exceptions, but you look at the date of separation, you figure out what your net worth is, and you subtract it by what your net worth was on the date of marriage. And it's those two dates that count. And you figure out what your net worth was on each of those dates to try and figure out how much did your net worth grow during the course of the marriage. And you do that for both of you. Of course, maybe we should clarify what is included in net worth and what's not included, some key things like inheritance. And well, there are several exceptions. Some of them are large gifts from someone other than your spouse, an inheritance, money from a personal injury claim, money from a life insurance policy. There are various exceptions and there's obligations to trace them as well. So unless you get into one of those exceptions of the rules, you're just looking to try and see what the increase was for both of them. And whoever has m a larger increase will owe half the difference to the one who has a smaller increase. So to give you an example, if your increase, you went up during the marriage by 25000 and your spouse went up by 15000 the difference is 10000 In that situation, you would owe your spouse $5,000. And if you want more information on the exceptions, I'd invite you to go to my website, separation.ca, and there's a plethora of information about equalization of net family property on the website and you can detail the exceptions and the rules you're asking questions about. Thank you so much, Edith, for your call. Does that answer Thank you, your question? Andrew. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much. So again, that's please read out your website again so we it's have it. Separation.ca. Separation.ca. I, I perused through it, fantastic source as well. Thank you. And we have another caller. And Joe, could you please go ahead and thank you again, Edith, for calling. Joe, please go ahead. Joe, are you there? And I think we've lost. I guess so. I think we've lost Joe. I think we've lost Joe. Of course, I invite all our viewers to give us a call and let us help you. Hi, I'm still Andrew. here. Can you hear me? Oh, is this Joe? Yes. All right, Joe. Thank you. Sorry about that. We we lost you there for a second. Joe, go ahead. No, my question is, when does child support end? I have a child that's still in school. She's 21, and she finishes her degree in April, but she's saying that she's going to pursue school. Okay, so that's a great question. It is. First of all, do you have a separation agreement? I have a divorce. Okay, it was a divorce about 18 years ago. Okay, and does the order, do you have a divorce order that says when child support will end? No, it wasn't written at the time. Okay, 
So that means you're subject to the definition in the Divorce Act of child of the marriage, and that gets back to a, one of the exceptions to continue child support beyond the age of 21 is full-time education. And at 21 years old, if she's going to pr pursue a second degree, there's a possibility that child support will continue. What is? Let me ask you this, though. What degree is she completing right now? She's taking drama. Is it a diploma in, in a college or a degree? It's, she's taking uh, arts and, uh, and drama. So is it a Bachelor of Arts degree? No, it's not. It's just a course that she's taking out of college. So it's a college diploma. And then yes. does she want to go on to university after that and get a bachelor's degree? Yes. Okay. Most likely, you would still have to pay child support, but there's some caveats to that. Does she want to uh, live at home with your wife while she's going to university, or is she planning on going away to university? No, she. I believe she plans to stay at home. Okay. Then most likely you would be paying the table, the guideline table child support while she's living at home in that second degree. For wouldn't shock me if you end up paying for three or four years, probably four years. The duration of of her pursuing the education is that probably 25. Test? 25 years old is a little on the older side, but doesn't shock me. You see it happen. Uh, most of my agreements, I would if I'm acting for the payor, I try to terminate support at 23. But there are cases where it goes on. Uh, and you may be called upon to contribute, or you probably will be called upon to contribute to tuition uh, and books as well. Is that an extraordinary expense, or is that...? It's a special and extraordinary expense. The real fine line here is whether 25 is too old. I certainly believe 21, 22, 23, there isn't going to be much of a problem. It's that extra year or two, but I could easily see a judge saying, uh, don't you want your child to get the education? The other piece that may be relevant in your situation is, at least in terms of the contribution to the special and extraordinary expenses, is your child working? Uh, what contribution can they make to their education? Are they applying for OSAP? Uh, your income and your spouse's income and your ability to help fund the university. So there's various questions that go into that. Would that information also be At available on separation.ca? There's a, we have a, significant amount of information and I would highly recommend you go on separation.ca and you can probably get some useful information and you may even see our blog which has some cases that will deal with that. If you go onto our blog and you search child support or adult child you should be able to find some cases there. And Joe I'm sorry I think I interrupted. Go ahead Joe. You were trying to say something? Yeah, what I was trying to say is that she's actually, uh, she's taking OSAP to go to school. So the, the child support that I'm paying is not going towards school. It's uh, actually, it's just going for room and board, I believe. That's what table child support is for. I'm also saying that you may have an obligation to contribute to things like tuition, books. And if she's getting OSAP, that may help uh, prevent you from having to pay her towards t the tuition and the books. And Joey, does that help you answer your question? Yes, very much. Thank you very much. Great, Thank you Joe. very much for your help. Thank you so much, and thank you, Joe, for calling, and thank you, Andrew. And, of course, we continue to invite our viewers to call in, and, and they're doing just that. We have only a couple minutes.